Hey guys, thanks for clicking. We really appreciate that. So today we're gonna do a quick little oil change and tune up on our leaf blower. Uh, we'll show you how easy it is, what you need to do it, and we'll go step by step. So let's check it out, show you what machine we have, and um, we'll go from there. Right, here's our blower. This is a 18 horse uh, Freedon. This is a really great machine. This is a hydro blower, which means uh, it, it, it goes by itself. Well, you have to control it, but it rolls. You don't have to push it. Anyway, <laughs> with that nonsense being said, we're gonna change the oil, we're gonna change the spark plugs, and we will check the air filter and see how that is, and we'll go step by step and show you. So let's start with the oil. So really quick, anytime you change the oil in any kind of a small engine or anything like that, it's ideal if you can have the oil uh, warm. You don't need it hot boiling, but if the oil is warm, it's gonna come out a lot easier. It's gonna be a little bit more efficient, so you're getting more of the oil out, and it comes out faster too. So uh, you always want the machine to be a little warm before you drain the oil. So let's get started with the oil drain and show you how it works on this machine. Okay, so on this machine, uh, it uses, can you see the square hex it goes in there? So this one has a plug that you actually just use the extension and it goes right in there and we unscrew it and the oil will drain directly down the hole in the frame. Freighton does a great job. Um, some of the machines aren't so good. The oil kind of goes everywhere, but so we're gonna pop this plug out first. So we just loosen this plug up and do it by hand. And I like to, when you spin it out until you, you feel it click like that, that means all the threads are out. That means it's, you can kind of slowly let the oil come out so it doesn't get everywhere, ideally. All right, that's all right there. So let's let that drain into the pan. Okay, so while that's draining, we will cover uh, some of our products of the week. These drop lights from Amazon, they're killer. They work really good because we like to promote products that don't suck. I know you've probably bought things in the past that kind of do suck, so these lights are awesome. They have a dimmer built in, they have a really strong magnet, and they work around and they put out a lot of light. So I will put that link in the description if you care. Also, when you're draining the oil on something, a lot of times it's good to open the fill, whether that's the dipstick, this one, just the fill is separate. You open that fill because it creates a little um, air ventilation and then the oil will come out more efficiently. Okay, so oil's drained. It's in the tub there. We're good to go. We're gonna put our plug back in. We drain the oil, we put our, our plug back in the bottom, we're good to go, we got our new oil. So now we're gonna refill the oil first. This particular engine is a little tricky because if you pour the oil in too fast, sometimes it drains out. So we're gonna pour it in a little slow, but. Okay, so we refilled our oil. We're gonna take a quick check of the dipstick. This particular one has a dipstick and it has two dots. So you wanna make sure your oil level is between the two dots that in come down perfect we're right between the two dots and it's always good to recheck the oil after you run the machine and let it cool down for a little bit because then you know your oil level is good but so that's it oil's in done nice and easy now let's move over to the uh, spark plugs we got two plugs on this motor it's a v-twin let's pop them out and let's get some new ones in there okay first plug this probably has two seasons on it. I don't have an hour meter on this machine, but it doesn't have a lot of hours on it. Uh, plug looks a little, we're gonna change them anyway, just cause like I said, it's two seasons. Now, always go by what your manufacturer requires for the plug, whatever they suggest. Uh, we're gonna try and go with the same compatible plugs. We have them right here. Unfortunately, Autolite was the only brand that the local parts store had that cross-referenced the exact same plug. So 
I'm not a huge fan of Autolite, but we're going to use them because we have them and we're here. You should check again, what do they suggest for gapping the plug? Now, most plugs come pre-gapped, but quickest way to do it is get yourself a little gap tool. Check your old plug. Usually they're always around 30 thousandths or so. Uh, this one's upside down, I think so. I'm going to check it out. It looks to me like it's about 30 thousandths. So let's check our new plug real quick. Make sure we're in the ballpark here. Boom, 30 thousandths, perfect. Let's put our new plug in. Be really careful when you put a spark plug back in because the heads are aluminum. It's very easy to strip. So watch, if it doesn't turn, you just shake it as you turn it like that. You just wobble it a little bit and make sure that that plug threads in all the way before you touch it with a socket because if you strip that head out that is a nightmare that does not need to happen and one other quick tip we got the plug in make sure you're going the right way so when you tighten your spark plug back in there is a compression washer on here and that washer squeezes and that helps hold your plug in so you tighten the plug to where it stops and then you're gonna, you'll feel it. It's gonna go, it's gonna go, and then it'll stop. That means you have compressed the washer in the right way. Sometimes people are afraid to tighten the plug enough, but you'll feel it as you do it. And if you want, you can always use some dielectric grease um, in here to help with the, I'm not gonna do that, but you can if you want to. So there it goes, that's one plug done. Let's go to the other side. Okay, same thing, other side, pretty easy to get, easy to get to the plug. Of course, we spilled some oil on it, so <laughs> a little slippery, that's fine. Let's get our other plug. It's a little black, some carbon on there, but you know, Take a look at your plugs when they come out. Make sure that they're kind of even. So this one looks a little bit more corroded than the one on the other side. So that could be a coincidence. It could be maybe it's not burning correctly. There's no problem with this machine. It runs perfectly. So just something to keep an eye on. Again, check the gap on your old plug see where it is because it could be gapped wrong that could have something to do with it that's right around 30 thousandths again check your new plug see this one's gapped a little i'm gonna i'm gonna tap that down a little bit mm. get it i'm gonna go with 30 perfect doing it same thing, when you put your plug in, like I said, just if it stops, just give it a little wiggle and it'll spin and you wanna get that plug back in. If you want to, you can use anti-seize on the threads. Uh, some people like to do that. A lot of times keeps the plug from uh, freezing in there, but we're not gonna do that. Okay, so we've got our oil change. We checked the level, put our fill back on here. Uh, the muffler was a little bit loose. We just tightened up some of the stuff. That's kind of part of the thing too when you're in here. Take a look at things. Make sure everything is, is good. It was just simply just some loose pulp. So we tighten that up. It's good to go. Now we're going to check our air cleaner um, and see how that looks. And like I said, when you're down in the machine, take a look. See, you know, is there oil leaking? Is there a loose nut? Is there there's something going on that you normally wouldn't notice? Take a quick look. Check your fuel line, uh, make sure it's not dry rotted. Um, actually, I can show you that. Let's go to the other side. So this small engine actually has a fuel pump. It's like a vacuum fuel pump. And here's your fuel lines. Now this is a newer machine. So these fuel lines are still good. So what happens to the fuel lines a lot of the times is that, you know, they're rubber, they harden. And when they harden, then they can crack or start to leak. So. This is a shutoff valve. Make sure your valve works good. Make sure your fuel lines, just take a quick look with the light. You know, you can see if it looks porous or if it looks cracked. Um, check that out, make sure it's good to go. Okay, so the other thing on small engines too, um, 
This particular engine does not have a oil filter either. In case some people ask about that. Some small engines have oil filters, some don't. This particular does not have an oil filter. So that's why we didn't change the oil filter. There is a fuel filter on this engine. Most little gasoline engines. Actually, we're gonna show you real quick. So this is our other machine, but I just wanna show you most, here's that little fuel uh, pump, like I was saying, and here's your line from your fuel tank. And there's usually always an inline fuel filter. It's this little plastic thing. Comes off very easily, two little clamps, you twist it out and you change your fuel filter. Very important to do that. Nine out of 10 small machines have a universal inline filter. So on this Vanguard 18, they use these engines on a lot of different pieces of equipment. Um, this actually does have a inline fuel filter, but it is a custom fuel filter, which we do not have today. So I removed the tank, I'm blinding myself. Here is your fuel filter, it's right here. As you can see, it's a custom filter. Uh, we will order that and change it, but there's four bolts that take the tank off. It's very easy to get to this filter. Uh, like I said, we will most definitely get this filter and change it. But unfortunately, we do not have it with us right now. Okay, and last but not least is the air filter. Uh, I know we had access to it with the tank off, but I'm gonna do it the right way, just so you can see how to get to the filter. Now to the air filter, so you pop that top piece off. You don't need to remove the tank to get to it. I know there was access to it, but we're going to remove this like that. You have a pre-filter, which comes off in your air filter. Like I said, this machine is fairly new, so I really don't think this filter is gonna need to be replaced. We're just going to uh, blow it out with some air and make sure it looks good. And if you use compressed air, always wear glasses because you don't want to get stuff in your eye. Anyway, a really good way to do this too is to hold it up into the sun and you can look through the filter from the inside out and you can tell if you see light through the filter, then you know it's pretty good. If you don't see any light, even though you blew it out, then you probably need a new air filter. All right, so air filter, same thing. Go in, put this back in there. We're gonna tighten it off. Like I said, this is a newer machine, so I don't really think it needed a new filter. That's why we didn't change it. But that's how you change it. And... All right, and that's it, folks. That is your basic maintenance. Um, this machine, we put a new belt on it last year, so I will put that in the um, end screen if you're interested or you have a blower that's similar to this on how to change and adjust your drive belt for the hydro. It's underneath this cover. We did it last year, we already checked it so it's good, but everything else is really simple on this. You did your oil, you got new plugs, air cleaner's good, uh, fuel filter, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this type of video, you know what to do. Hit that like and subscribe. Peace.